CataractCoach.com. Final case of UCLA residency. We have an anonymous resident who's operating here. And obviously, UCLA has a soft spot in my heart. As of August 31 of 2022, I retired from teaching the UCLA ophthalmology residents. My private practice is still going strong. It's busier than ever. That's devganai.com. And luckily for me, I've always done my academic duties in parallel with my own private clinic and surgery center. I achieved the rank of clinical professor of ophthalmology at UCLA at the Jewel Stein Institute at age 44 and chief of ophthalmology for a dozen years at one of their very large teaching facilities. And I was honored with their surgical professor teaching award five times, the most ever in the history of that department. Now I'll still be doing cataract surgery and making these great videos, but I'm going to stick to Beverly Hills. So here's the case. Again, this anonymous resident sent the video in. It's her last case of residency. And because of some COVID-related issues, she only ended up doing about 200 cases during residency. In years prior, most UCLA residents would do at least 300 cases, some even more than that. And that's in the complete um, three-year residency. So internship plus three years or four years total. So there's the paresthesis eye being filled with viscoelastic, a little bit more. I like that technique that I'm just checking. It looks like a big myopic eye. Look how dilated that uh, eye is. You can even see that zylar attachment to the anterior lens cuff. Let's see that main incision here. So advancing the keratome, pretty reasonable tunnel length, and entering the AC. I'm not a huge fan of that dimple down thing, but it looks like the incision just slightly chevron in appearance. Not too bad. I'll take it. Now, here comes the Rexes. Now, be careful. An eye like this where it's so dilated, don't use the pupil size or pupil margin to judge the Rexes size. You're going to have to use your forceps with marks on them, or you'll have to have some other sort of mental calipers because you don't want to make a mega-sized Rexes. Because remember, you still have a 6 millimeter optic. Now, I can just kind of tell by the position of the hands here and that massive dilation, it's probably a very myopic eye. Now, I was not scrubbed in for this surgery. She sent the surgery in, which was done with a different attending. But very nice looking Rexus here. I like the take, taking the time here to make it right and uh, beautifully centered. I'll take it. That's a nice looking Rexus here. And now some higher dissection. Oh, using a specialized cannula here. Looks like a little J-shaped cannula. So going way out to the lens equator to inject the fluid. And let's see, going the other direction too. And now let's see the rotation. Probably going to be easier to rotate this nucleus with that J-shaped cannula. And so there it goes. Nope, a little more. I didn't see a whole lot of rotation there, but let's check. Now look at the incision outline. You can see the right side of the incision, the tunnel length a little shorter. The left side's a little bit longer. And so that incision really needs a little more finesse. Now coming here with the FACO probe. And let's see what we have here. A ball tip chopper in the other hand. Okay. Looks like a horizontal chop. I like it. You know, if you finish your residency a couple hundred cases in and you can do a chop technique, I think you've done pretty well. You've shown that you've got that great hand-eye coordination and you can make things happen. And so, again, now taking out the nucleus. Looks like it's reasonably soft, not a super dense nucleus. And let's see what else is happening here. Rotating it, I hope, a little bit. Because right now, most of the nucleus is under the probe and very little is in front of it. Ah, much better. Getting that thing rotated is going to make your life a lot easier. And now bring it up. Again, not a dense cataract. So pretty easy just to bring it up to the iris plane. And it looks like a very deep anterior chamber. And it can be emulsified pretty easily. So that looks great. Now keep in mind, your learning only just begins during residency. Right? Think about it. This doctor will do... 10,000 surgeries in her career. This is case 250, though this is, you know, just a few percent along the road, not even at the 10% mark. And so keep in mind, you got to keep learning and keep advancing your techniques here to be better and better. And the things you learn in your residency are not necessarily the things you're going to do the rest of your life. You'll keep coming out with new things you want to learn and new techniques and technologies and devices and implants and that's half the fun of ophthalmology, is keeping up with all the fun gadgets and toys. So cleaning up the cortex here pretty nicely. It looks like a very nice case. So I'm proud of this resin. Great job. Case looks great. And you've got, obviously, the drive and determination and the skills to really advance in your career in the future. And we're really proud of you. And I want to say thank you to 22 years of residents, about 200 residents whom I've had the pleasure of teaching in the operating room. And as we all know, a lot of hand-holding goes on there. 
And we also taught you a whole lot of life lessons. I teach more than just cataract surgery. We teach them other advanced techniques, like coma surgeries, corneal surgery, DSEC, DMEC, you name it, but also about life and practice and finding that balance in your life. And there are a lot of uh, important lessons to be learned during your training. And those I'll certainly miss, but it's definitely time to change gears. You can't do the same thing forever. And I think after 22 years and being the most awarded professor in that whole department in terms of surgical teaching, I got nothing left to prove. Now, as the young people would say, time to drop the microphone and move on. But no, for me, it's more about passing the baton. Let the next generation of young ophthalmologists start to climb up that same ladder in academia and start teaching more and more. And I want to say thank you to all my amazing residents over the course of the last 22 years. You guys are amazing. It's been a pleasure to work with you. And I'll still teach you every single day by making more cataract coach videos. You'll keep asking for, for more videos and I'll keep making them. All right, take care and thank you again to all my great residents. It's been an honor.